The world of artificial intelligence is a really crazy and vast landscape of both really good and some really bad things. And I'm sure by now you've heard about Photoshop Beta's generative AI feature where you can actually go and do a generative fill and add things into the scene. Now, I don't think this is a completely bad feature to have because we've done things like compositing over the years. So essentially this is like an artificial way to composite a scene, which can save us photographers a lot of time in the editing process. But if you're not a photographer that's gonna use features like that, I wanna show you two use cases here today of how you can use this new AI feature in Photoshop to do realistic changes and manipulations to your images. So the first use case here is very simple. Let's say you went out and took a pretty good series of portraits, but your favorite shots or the shots that your client likes the best, maybe there's a couple of pieces that aren't the best in the frame. Maybe you cropped a little bit too tight. So what we could do here is in this case, her shoulder, I want more of that in the frame. So what I can do is simply make the image a little bit larger to account for her shoulder being there. And I'm just going to type in something like extend the frame. Now it might not get it perfect right away, but we can always go in and generate new pieces. And then what we're going to get is a couple of different variants. And I think that one did a pretty decent job. This one actually is my favorite. There is a seam line that we're going to have to kind of fix here, but I like the fact that we have her entire shoulder in the frame now. Now another one is maybe a problem you're not really going to face or maybe you will. As a marketing professional I run into this problem a lot where I have tons of vertical images or maybe square but an advertiser for a print agency is looking for a horizontal photo. But if I don't have that I can't really submit that to them. So one thing you could do is use the generative AI to extend out a photo and make it a horizontal image. So we're just going to go ahead and grab the photo here and then it's going to go ahead and expand that for us. So we can take what was a vertical image, make it horizontal and use it in the advertising sense. In this particular example, I don't think it's going to take away from the image too much, but you could see here it's expanded the image and made the room bigger. So now I have this horizontal image to use for advertising purposes. Now this may not be what the rest of this room actually looks like, but in this case, the subject is the important piece here, not necessarily the room that she's in. I don't feel like that we're necessarily trying to falsify anything here, but what we've done is now created an image that is usable for a, a scenario that we might need it for. In reality, there's no right or wrong ways to be using AI for your photography. Me personally, I don't really do all the crazy over editing photos, at least not anymore. And at least not in my professional work I do on a day to day basis. Typically it was only my personal work that I ever did composites with, but I'd be interested to see if I were to pick up some of my old personal photo projects and use AI in lieu of compositing all these different images together on my own to see if I could come up with really good results. But what do you think? How are some ways that you're using AI in your photography today? It doesn't have to pertain just to, to what I showed you here with the generative AI. This could be things like ChatGPT or other AI software that you use to edit your photos. Do you think there's a fine line there that photographers shouldn't cross? Or do you think it's subjective and it just depends on the type of photography that you're doing? I would love to hear your creative comments in the comments section below. And as always, be sure to create something new today.